It's the unhappy hour. Yeah. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles, on a very rainy night to be specific. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unhappy Hour. However, we are very happy right now. The Cleveland Cavaliers have demolished the Chicago Bulls. Yes, okay, demolish is a tough word to use when, you know, it came down to two buzzer beaters and whatnot, and it was a game of runs where one team would go 13-0 and or on a 15-2 to spurt, something like that. It was a lot of that, but at the end, the Cavs won, and the Cavs advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals, and I'll tell you what, this is a gritty, this is a tough team, and I called it. You can go back in the archives. I don't know if I said it or if I wrote it on our YouTube page or what have you, but I've been saying Matthew Delavadova is going to be the key to this series. And I was laughed at. Yes, I'm looking at you, Corey. Corey always comments on uh, the YouTube channel, and Greg is starting to do the same, and we want you guys to do it as well, guys and girls. If you're an Indians, Cavs, Browns, or Buckeye fan, that's kind of the wheelhouse of what we do at the Unhappy Hour, and we've been doing it for four years here at the TNAM Radio Network at thenewamericanmedia.com. My name's Brian Engelman. I'm your host, and I appreciate each and every one of you listening, but like I said, I want you to sign up. Subscribe to youtube.com slash the new american media that's youtube.com slash the new american media sign up for it uh go ahead and click subscribe and then start leaving some comments we got four years of archived shows um we've talked with two people who are going to be presidential candidates uh one would be uh republican mike huckabee although we just talked music at a music convention in Anaheim a few years ago. No politics there. Maybe I'll get him back on the show for this new cycle. And uh, Gary Johnson, libertarian out of New Mexico. Um, it's just a lot of interesting content, sports and politics and otherwise. So youtube.com slash the new American media. Click subscribe, and you can throw a penny or two into our wishing well by letting those ads play before our videos instead of skipping over them. That's like clicking a penny into our wishing well. And we wish you would continue doing that because that's fantastic. Helps offset the enormous costs of uh, doing business here in 2015. So thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, but make sure you also check out the, the homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com, thenewamericanmedia.com, because the old American media has failed us. We have to do the job that they are just too lazy to do. Um, so that's what we're doing over there. Thenewamericanmedia.com is our hub. And on the right-hand side, three things I want you to know. Number one, on the right-hand side, TNAM Radio. That's where you click play to listen live. When do we go live? Whenever we can get guests like former NBA scout and current NBA consultant and lifelong Cleveland sports fan Zach Barris, who's going to join us in just a moment here. Um, you know, that's that's what we do. Uh, when we can go live, we send things out on Twitter and Facebook, and then we go live through TNAM Radio at thenewamericanmedia.com. That's how you join this conversation. So on the right-hand side, it's also our uh, Facebook feed. Click it and follow us, um, or like our page, rather. Uh, or you could do a search for The New American Media, spaces in between, and then like our page. And on Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore. So without further delay, let's get to Zach Barris, the man, the myth, the legend. The Cavs fan. And he's got some insight into the the opponent that we just vanquished as well. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Oh, how do you think I'm doing? Cavs put away the Chicago Bulls. I'm I'm doing great. You told me not to right? worry. Yeah, you were right. You were right. And guess what? I, in the beginning, you missed it, but I said I called Matthew Dellavedova was going to be the key to the series. Um, you know, of course, there were many keys to this series, but Delhi stepped up big time. Uh, he is earning a lot of fans and probably a couple of million dollars with his efforts. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess we were both right. You were a little more cautiously calm about, well, we're going to put the Bulls away. Don't worry. And after well, the, the two buzzer I mean, beaters, I was a little laid back. This is, this is exactly what I was looking at for the first few games. They were playing so poorly, so poorly. In the, the series, they were down, you know, when was the last time we talked? It was 2-1? to one. Yeah, I think so. We missed the two great okay. games. I just did a show uh, yesterday or the day I just, before. I'm, I've just been on the road, and I haven't, you know, I just haven't had the time. But looking at it, though, when you're going sitting there analyzing the game, game, game four, the Cavaliers, you know, in Chicago, the LeBron buzzer beater was unreal. 
And, and, and a game that Chicago could have won and they needed to win it to win the series. There's no doubt. Yeah, they that was theirs. That was the dagger. That was the dagger. Yeah, they had to be deflated and defeated after that. And I got to say, that was the best birthday buzzer beater I've ever had. I celebrated my birthday on that day. And I will never forget the great breakfast my girlfriend made me, the awesome cake she made me, and the buzzer beater by LeBron James. It was just a, a very good day. Um, a great birthday present. Um, yeah, but that really was, Zach. That was their chance. I mean, it took Derrick Rose hitting that. And I'm just going to call it lucky. You know, I've played enough basketball where if it's if you're banking it in, you weren't intending to bank it in. On he banked 90. every shot in. <laughs> I'll, okay, when it's a but one-handed yeah, runner from 15 getting, feet, I was sure. I was talking with someone about this. You know, Rose, make, Rose takes that exact shot again. He makes it five out of 100 times. He does. Tony makes it five out of 100, 5% of the time. You give LeBron's buzzer beater the other night, and someone goes, well, he would never hit that again. I go, are you crazy? I was like, it's not like he banked it. And he's hit plenty of those before. I go, I go if anything, he's a, he's shooting that shot at 30%. Did you call bank? I called game. <laughs> I, I, I was like, dude, when he hit that, I was, I was going nuts. <laughs> and, you know, I was at the airport when watching that game, and thank God my flight was delayed. Cause yeah, I, could, I was cause wondering it, about that because you were telling me, you're like, dude, this is lined up terribly for me. I'm going to miss it. I, I was worried about you. I literally, I literally was. <laughs> I, 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 I thank God my flight got delayed to San Diego, um, but it, it all worked itself out. They were epic games, it. Zach. It was an epic series. There, I mean, back to back buzzer beaters from two MVPs of the entire league. Uh, has that ever happened before? If so, it's a very small I, I don't list. Know, but I mean, this is something that I like. The Cavaliers pretty much at game five of the bag. Yeah, they let Chicago climb it the last couple minutes. Yeah, but there was never really any time when you're like, oh my God, we're going to lose this game. Well, when it was five it and Jimmy time. Butler hit the three, whatever that, it, and I then still, Rose I gets the never... rebound and takes it coast to coast. And hey, how about LeBron's block on that play? Two point game, under a minute left. LeBron blocks the the other former MVP, Derrick Rose. How clutch was that? I mean, wasn't that an epic oh, moment? Unbelievably. I mean, and plus, I, I mean, like I said, game five was unreal. And you knew you were going to get that. And game game five, you came out there and expected it. Game six, you're sitting there tonight, and I, mean, I feel like you're the only person who thought the Cavaliers were going to win them. I, I don't know why. No, oh, no, I had them in a blowout. I picked I picked them with 11. And if, if you guys want to join our – I don't even know. How would they join our unhappy hour show – um, but but I'll tell you what. To invite him. Yeah, it's but, it's a private group. But anyway, I called it by eleven. Getting, I thought it was going to be a blowout. I thought we were going to get him. Yeah, and getting to it, I mean, you know, watching the first quarter, like okay, the offense was great. It was all it was the Tristan Thompson show in the first quarter. Yeah, you know, that, it, it worried me that LeBron had foul trouble. But if you notice at the beginning of the game, all Chicago's bigs were in major foul trouble the entire game. It seemed like Gibson yeah. had three fouls in two minutes. Gasol was on the bench. Mirotic played like crap. I mean, it was an understatement. He was arguably the Cavaliers' second or third best player tonight. <laughs> and he's a dangerous guy that could easily pop in 23 and make a huge difference. Instead, it was Matthew Dellavedova for the Cleveland Cavs. Well, Go that figure. Was the thing. And that's what, that's what I'm saying. And when the Cavaliers' role players play to their ability, they're virtually an unbeatable basketball team, is what we've seen this year with J.R. Smith, Shumpert, Tristan, and Dellavedova. Those are your four you know, key role players. And, and Mavs got too. But when, when, when a couple, when you have two or three of those guys that are shooting their lights out, the Cavaliers are unbeatable. I mean, they won without Kyrie Irving. James Jones and Shumpert, man. Everybody's contributing. This team is tough as nails. They, they have guts. They have heart. They have fight. They are resilient. They, they are, I'll tell you what, after Kevin Love went down, I, I'll be honest, like, yes, uh, I still want a championship. And yes, I still said the Cavs are going to win it. Um, because I'm the eternal optimist when but it comes you didn't to that believe thing. It. I, I, I wasn't feeling it. I, I, I wanted to believe it, so I, I just lied to myself and said I believe it. But I wasn't feeling it. Now I'm feeling it. Seeing all those extra minutes from Kevin Love going to Tristan Thompson, you go, well, we're not losing as much as we thought. Look at this damn effort that he's putting in. It's changing the game in other ways. You know, we've we, seen the emergence of Della Vidova and Thompson in this series. We, we have. And who, do, who, who these, gets the credit for that? I mean, it's whoever you want. It's the development. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of it, I think, is playing with LeBron. I think LeBron has really helped him along the way. If of you course. look at it, Delva Delva had some time this year, and you're like, God, what the hell is he doing? Stop shooting the ball. <laughs> yeah. Now he's an open shot, and you're like, take it, take it, take it. Right, right, right. I mean, let's let's talk about that for a second, though. David Blatt, you know, the, the timeout heard around the world. Shut up, everybody. If you call that easy, blatant Joakim Noah mugging of LeBron underneath the basket on the other side, we're not even talking about that moment. You know what, you know what even much. upsets me as a Bulls fan going, okay, we didn't have Gasol for the last two games, and tonight he didn't play at 100%. And I'm thinking to myself, I go, 
Okay, yeah, you're gonna have Gasol for two games. The Cavaliers without Kevin Love, they were without Anderson Vergeau. And I know you can you don't even have to say Anderson Vergeau, but he still is when healthy a key part of this team. And when he's back next year, you know, he's not gonna be playing thirty minutes a night like they don't need him. You know, he can be playing fifteen minutes a night and be just as effective. But that's what I'm saying is the Cavaliers are down two of their big men in the series. Exactly. Anybody that wants to complain, I and let's not forget, LeBron really did tweak that ankle. Uh, we just kind of he he's such an Iron Man. You you just never imagine him getting injured for extended periods of time. But he is an Iron Man. Um, but yeah, Kevin Love being gone this whole time, I don't I don't want to hear any excuses from the Chicago Bulls. But I you know that, that regarding that timeout though, isn't it time that we give Coach Blatt a little bit of uh, a little bit of props at this point because he, yeah, losing nervous. Kevin That's Love and he had. He, he actually deserves it. He, he, you know, they, their ball movement was fantastic on the offensive end of it, just fantastic. Defensively, they were able to guard the, they, they guard the interior, protected the rim like they should have been doing all series. And this is when this team is when this team plays like they did tonight, they're virtually unbeatable. And they didn't, they played far, far from a perfect game at points. Right. But the thing is, you know, and, and the thing is with Chicago, I'm just going to say it like this is because for. The guy who listens all the time, who's a Bulls fan. I don't know if you put a comment on his. Yeah, his name is Corey. I I had to double check because I forgot it. But yes, it's Corey. You could speak directly to him. I mean, like I said, I was right the whole series. (laughs) Yeah, I called it Bulls and Cavs in five, and and obviously that Derrick Rose lucky shot. No, but but I'll tell you what, Corey. He he bailed out after game five. He goes, "That was our chance. It's over. I'm turning to the combine." And he legitimately says, "I don't even like playoff basketball as much as I like the draft and the combine." And uh, he's a stats so, geek, all that kind of stuff. I will stuff. tell you this though: this is the end of the Bulls. I, I, this is the end of this current team, though. It has to be. Wow, what happened? Um, what happens I, I now? Do they be gone? right? You know, here's the thing: you got a perfectly healthy team that on paper looks like the Eastern Conference champions. They do. Put them on paper. You, you go, oh, Derrick Rose, Jimmy Butler, it's the best backcourt in the NBA. Oh, it's all. Oh, okay. You know, they've got Dunleavy. They've got you know, look at their front court. Their front court's stacked. They've got Pau Gasol. They've got Noah. They've got They've got Mirotic, and they've got, uh, what's his name, Taj Gibson. On paper, they look stacked. And you've got Aaron Brooks coming off your bench, I mean, and Kirk Heinrich. It's a very good basketball team on paper. Yeah. But when you, when you analyze it down to the end, Pau Gasol is one of the worst defenders in the league. Yeah, he's a good rebounder, but guy can't defend for his life. Joe Noah is a bum at this point. I mean, he just, he just isn't what he used to be. He's always been a liability on the offensive back, but, I mean, he's, he's just, I mean, he's not even a good defender anymore. He's a Oh, hold on. We still got you, Zach. Well, we are experiencing one of our... Zach, are you still with us? Okay, I'll get him back on the phone in a second. Um, we are experiencing one of the first rainstorms in Los Angeles in a long time. If you haven't heard, we're in a drought. If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. So, who knows? Maybe the uh, Maybe the connection is a little goofy because of the rain. But yeah, on paper, that Bulls team looks good. And you say, why would you get rid of Thibodeau? Well, it looks like they might. We'll try to get Zach on right now. Try to get him back into the show, provided his battery didn't die. Hello? They look like a playoff team on paper. How far ago, how long ago did I lose you? Uh, They look like a playoff team on paper. Okay. And we went through all their roster. a A bad service. Um... So what I was getting at is, you know, they look like a playoff team on paper, break down the whole roster. You've got Rose and Butler in your, in your front court. These are starters. You know, Rose on paper is an MVP. Butler, Butler, there's obviously nothing you can say bad about. I mean, he is what he is. Um, you know, you've got good backups in Heinrich and Brooks. Brooks didn't play enough in the series, which is the problem. He was not given enough minutes. He dominated the Cavs every chance he had. Played very well and was not given enough minutes, which is, I think, solely lies on Thibodeau. Um, you know, small forward, you lack the talent at right now. You've got... You know, you have Mike Dunleavy and Doug McDermott, who aren't bad players, but, you know, they're, they're role players. They are for what they are. Dunleavy's a decent player. And, I mean, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not Doug McDermott. Doug McDermott didn't play. Tony Snell. And right. Snell's still young, hasn't really had a chance to do much yet. Um, then you get to the front court. Obviously, Mirotic on paper, you know, looks like that guy who can be the next, you know, who can be the next great power forward, the Euro guy, you know. But, you know, when he plays, I mean, he's not the next Dirk Nowitzki with the way he played this series. Um, he does have his nights, though. He really does. I mean, don't forget, at the end of the year, he's the savior for that team. Gasol is one of the worst defenders in the league, power forward, you know, but he's a, he's a great offensive player. But, you know, it just it doesn't translate into playoff basketball these days when you're playing against a more physical team. Uh, you know, and then going ahead, Joe Kino is a huge liability, and Todd Gibson can't really do much offensively. 
But no one's a liability on both ends of the floor. I mean, he's terrible. I mean, if, if you watch the player earlier tonight, when they had a fast break going, Rose fed him the basketball and, you know, almost fumbled the ball away. You know, Chicago was luckily to regain possession of it, but, you know, on a fast break, on a two-on-one. I mean, that, that's how bad he is. Right. So but Chicago, they're still if dangerous. Stuck, if, I, if I'm Gar Foreman next year, I'm looking at the team and I go, okay, obviously my current team went healthy. Can't beat a Cavs team that's down to an unhealthy Kyrie Irving with a terrible foot injury. He can barely play. He didn't even play the second half tonight. He didn't play the last two and a half quarters. Luckily, they didn't without, need him to. Delavadova was playing they, lights out, so they just they rest they up. They were without Kevin Love. Yeah. And they were without Anderson Barajal. Three extra guys went next year. And... Don't forget, taking the added experience you'll have with the team, they're going to be unbeatable in the East next year. They are. I was watching a couple <laughs> games ago just thinking about all those things you referenced, the Verizal and Love and Kyrie healthy and whatnot. I just thought, man, there is no way anyone's going to touch this team next year. When they have a chance to get back and get healthy, nobody's going to have a chance to touch this team. They are going to be beyond filthy. That pick and roll with Della Vadova to Tristan Thompson, that little alley-oop thing that they play so well. I mean, this team is absolutely stacked. A few games ago, I was saying, man, how good. I'm clicking at the end of the season. Oh, yeah. You've really seen out of them. I mean, this is something we didn't have at the beginning. Now you have it. Del Vadova was a liability for a lot of the season offensively. Huge liability. Yeah, now he's, he's now knocking down his threes. Own offensive player. We've seen him become his own offensive player in the last couple months. I mean, it's really taken to the point where I'm not a, I don't cringe every time I watch him shoot. Yeah, anytime Del Vadova takes a shot or when Tristan shoots a free throw, we're, we're, we're not closing our eyes and crossing our fingers anymore. That's, that is a good spot. But a couple games ago, Zach, I was saying, God, wouldn't it have been great to have Ray Allen on this bench? You know, as all of our guys were getting injured with the mod Shumpert and his groin. Shumpert's been able to make shots. Smith has been able to make shots. I mean, his team has unbelievable chemistry. And I even think, you know, a part of it was getting LeBron to buy into it. And I think LeBron's completely bought into this team. You guys are fighting. D- explain after, that. They're going hard. And especially after Kevin Love went down, you know, in game one, this team was beaten. They did. They, they looked beaten in game one. And then all of a sudden, they came out there game two, beat the, beat the snot out of the Bulls. Game three, you had that that lost and then that's where you know you're really tested game four they came out and won game five they won and game six they dominated and I think they just took the life out of the Bulls they're a far superior team than the Bulls despite what anybody says don't forget you, you won that series in six games when the Bulls were healthy and you weren't I mean yeah they were without Casal two games but there it's a crapshoot and you won both of them and trust me Love is a much better player than Gasol any day of the week yeah Hey, it was just interesting to wonder what if Ray Allen had signed that 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 deal with the Cavs halfway through the season. I don't know what would have happened. Maybe it would have destroyed the chemistry of the team. I don't know. It could have happened. You know, exactly. I don't, I don't think he'd be seeing a lot of Della Vadova. I think he'd be cutting into J.R. Smith's minutes. Uh, but you know, the Cavaliers have proved they don't really Good need point. Ray Allen. They can shoot the three on their own. Yeah, yeah. You most know, nights between Shumpert, Delhi, Irving, and, and and Smith, you can shoot the three. I, mean, I know, and, and then there, you add Ky- no need for a three-point shooter. <laughs> and then you add Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, and you go, "Oh my God, <laughs> everybody can yeah. shoot this rock." You really say to yourself, "Wow, how does anybody beat this team?" I, I mean, do I think Atlanta or Washington is going to be a huge challenge for the Cavaliers? Absolutely not. I really don't. Atlanta's been playing like crap the entire playoffs. I mean, they barely beat Brooklyn. They they lost to a John Wallace Wizards team. I mean, yeah, they're up three to two, but the Wizards aren't that good of a basketball team. Right. Well, and the Hawks, the Hawks, man, they had their moments, but that was that. That's way in the rearview mirror, you know. The, the Hawks and the Cavs went totally the different Hawks ways. The Hawks have been so bad offensively; they remind me a lot of like a poor man's Bulls at this point. I think the, the Bulls could beat them too. Well, let me hold on before we get to before we get to uh, Hawks and Wizards because I do want to do that. Um, did you happen to catch the quote tonight where uh, LeBron was saying that this that this team has surprised him? I forget exactly how it was uh, specifically worded. I don't have the quote in front of me, but he he was interviewed after the game and he just kind of took a pause and kind of looked around. And he's like, "Yeah, my, this team has even surprised me this year." Is that what you meant by what, that? It that LeBron finally bought in? Yes, I really do. Because I think your point LeBron was looking at going to, you know, I mean, I think he was real. So he's thinking, you know, I've got no chance. I mean, you have to look at it like that. He's probably saying, I have no chance to win a title this year. And now he's got to think, okay, we just wiped the Bulls out in six. Next year, he shouldn't be a problem for us, whether we face Washington or Atlanta. You know, you know, we should have a pretty easy road to the finals with the way we've been playing. We should be able to 
knock these guys out either one of these teams in five games. When do you think that switch with LeBron happened? After he took that break or somewhere after the Mozgov I don't know trade? When it, I don't know when it happened. I think he realized these guys are fighters and that they played hard and they did what they had to do. I mean, I think it may have been game two where he realized it. You know, I'll tell you what. Um, I love the scrappiness of this team. I played I played uh, for Brunswick, the Brunswick Blue Devils back in high school outside of Cleveland, and I was a defensive end. And I'll tell you what, we had a lot of undersized guys with oversized hearts. And, uh, you know, we went undefeated regular season, made a playoff run, uh, got a win the first round, then got knocked out by Canton McKinley the second round. But I just I, – I remember just how strong – our team would fight, how we would never give up on a play, how we would always have each other's backs. It was like somebody on our defense would just make the play every well, single time. Too, but, you know, in, in this sense, look at it too. Yeah, you guys may not have been the most talented, but don't forget the Cavaliers are the most talented player on the planet. Yeah, we had a great linebacker. We had a, a great running back. Uh, some great offensive, defensive linemen, but yeah, LeBron James, the best player on the planet. It sure and doesn't when you hurt. Have a, when you have the best player on the planet and a bunch of other guys, playing, I mean, J.R. Smith and Shepard are playing like, I mean, they're playing really, really, really good basketball. You know, and the biggest thing is now you've given Kyrie Irving, as long as Washington wins game six, which which we want them to anyway, I want that series to go as long as possible. How much? How much of a difference does that make between uh, the next game that we play? Is that already set in stone? I, I no, I don't. I don't know yet. I think it. I don't think it is. Um, but you know, like I said, they're going to get them on par with the other series too, with the Western Conference Finals too. So. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, and a lot of these series are three too. So it's like if you see the Rockets win, if you see uh, the Wizards win. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely wear them out at this point in the season. You're not you're not getting experience at this point. You want to win and rest and then get ready and get co- coached up and, and go out and battle. You don't want to be dragging ass. And it really seems I just want like, Kyrie Irving to have the most time possible to get his foot right, so you know, LeBron get his ankle right. So all these guys were banged up. Can you find a go? Absolutely. Hey, you know, I noticed something about Timothy Mozgov. You know, he's a lot like Tristan initially. He gets to a lot of the right spots and he gets two rebounds. But he he does that thing where if you have an NFL receiver, they wait for the ball to hit him in the chest as opposed to putting your hands out and getting it quicker. It's like Mozgov is just like a split second too slow on grabbing the rebound. Is that just well, I mean, me? Mozgov, or... Mozgov has hands of stone. There's nights when he looks really good. There's nights when he looks bad. I mean, that's why he's not playing 35, 40 minutes a game. It's like Tristan Thompson is. Do you think he'll get better with, with some more coaching and more time with LeBron? I mean, I think a lot of it's just, you know, adapting to the offense, getting more time. I mean, but like I said, he's not, you know, he's not a premier center in his league. He's an above average center. He's a good center, but he's not elite. And we all knew that. You know, he doesn't have the ability. You know, he, like I said, he's not an all-star center. He has he's had games where LeBron's feeding him and he looks good. You know, he looks very good at times, but there's also times he looks very bad. I, I swear, it seems like every other game I've seen an alley oop to him that he that he clanks off of the rim and the ball goes flying. But this team played from far from perfect basketball this year. He's really, one of in six games. Yeah. That that is the truth. We we're far from perfect basketball. I th- I think we are just going to be deadly as we move forward. But let me wrap up the point I was going to make about and Coach. Don't Bo- forget LeBron shooting. LeBron shooting was poor again tonight, and they blew away Chicago. It was Della Vadova was was the leading scorer. Um, I don't know. Give me some more on Della Vadova. Just I mean, what he, do you make of this? One resurgence? of those guys. He's so tough defensively. He's a kid, and you know he reminds. Like I said, he always reminds me of that kid that wasn't very good in high school or middle school, and you just play him, and he would nonstop. You know, it felt like he was fouling you, taking your wrist every time you're dribbling the basketball, pisses you off, and gets in your head. And now he's actually starting to do something offensively, which is huge for the Cavaliers because they needed it. Yeah, with Kevin Love he out, and Kyrie down. After open look and hit every one. I mean, it's not the point where Delvin is not the guy. He's not joking. No, you can just leave open in the front, you know, in the top of the floor court and leave him open. And just say, okay, okay, he's not going to shoot it anyway. He suck. You know, Dolph Dolph actually is making his shots, and that's why he's so deadly. You know, he was such a good defender. He helped shut down Rose a lot. You know, Derrick Rose was, did nothing in the second half of the ball game. And and uh, you could and that was one of the the positions that the Cavs were kind of saying, and a lot of fans were saying, man, if we could just upgrade that backup point guard position, jeez, that's our biggest weakness. You know, and, I've been saying all season it'd be so nice if they could get a backup like Norris Cole in here next year. You know, who obviously wants to be here. 
Um, <laughs> you know, but you know, and I'm looking at it now. Do they need more skull? I couldn't imagine. You know, Delva Delva is such a cheaper option, and you know they're going to have limited money to spend next year. You know, yeah, they're going to trade Brennan Haywood for something. Um, I don't know what contract they're planning to get, but let me mark my words on this: this team next year will be even better than this year's team. And you know, this team's down. This team's this team's down a couple guys, but they're not out, and that's for sure. I mean, you're looking at they're the favorite for either whoever one of these teams they face in the East. They're the favorites going into the series, either way. Yeah, until Kevin Durant comes over to the Wizards. Um, do, so yeah, the, I, I guess. Yeah, so I know. Will be just fine. So, so, but but you're saying that that you think um, you're. Hang on, I'm trying. I'm trying to phrase this the right way. But basically, you were saying this Cavs team will be better next year because we we deal Brendan Haywood's contract, his weird contract, and get back a pretty solid uh, mid level player with with decent money on the attached to the contract. So you're basically yeah. saying that that Kevin Love is coming back here next year. That that you don't see him if he going isn't, elsewhere. Like I said, if he doesn't, we'll line up with Lamarcus Aldridge. I'm Me- not worried. Meaning that we'll do a sign and trade because that's what Kevin Love would want, and then we could reacquire different assets. Uh, with a player that's equally unhappy where they are, is what you're like saying. Like I said, if they're without Kevin Love next year, they'll be with Aldridge, who I think is a better player anyway, but I think Kevin Love has found his niche and found his role. See, but if he doesn't want to be part of it, then fine. You don't have to be part of it. If you don't want to win a title, go to go to Portland. You know, I think Lamarcus Aldridge has finally realized he's not going to win one and they have no chance to get out of the first round. Man, or did, second round of the playoffs over there. The did, West is too difficult. And in the East, you have LeBron, you've got Kyrie, you'd have a much easier road to the championship. And he'd be on a much better team. Did Portland have the uh, the Atlanta Hawks syndrome? They've been, no, they've been the kind of good for a while. Good, I think there were too many good teams in the West. I think that's the problem. But were they ever good enough to be the team representing no, the conference? No, absolutely not. I mean, were they good enough to beat San Antonio this year? No, they're, they're just not. You know, well, they don't have anywhere near the talent level of the Golden State Warriors. And I'm, and I'm sure hoping that one goes uh, to seven games as well. Uh, listen, I want I want to get to Wizards Hawks, but I, I just got to pick on uh, uh, Damian. I believe he was on a show with with you and I one time back on a previous episode of the Unhappy Hour. Oh, by the way, if you ha- if you're not following Zach, he's on Twitter at Z Barris. That's Z B A R I S. Um, no, but he he kind of made it uh, a point clear on our uh, Facebook group our sports group over there and he said hey you know talk about coach Blatt for just another second you know everybody was crucifying him saying they wanted his head get him out of Cleveland and look what he's doing down Kevin Love down Kyrie Irving with an injured LeBron that's playing like he's not uh Amon Shumpert's groin injury just all the way the J.R. Smith suspension talk about where the coach comes in and how you think Blatt their ranks. offensive their offensive and defensive adjustments in the series have been crucial to their success it There's is. no doubt in my mind it played a factor in it. Because obviously tonight, you know, when you were down a guy like Kyrie, oh, wait, can we let Della Vadova play big minutes? Is he capable of doing that? What other options do we have? Do we have J.R. Smith at the point? Do we have LeBron at the point? You know, but it's taking away from LeBron's effectiveness when he's had the ball every time. You know, does Shumpert carry up the ball? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. You know, what are the, what are the rotations that we're going to be playing? Do we pull Mozgov because he's been roughly ineffective for four games of the series? Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of moves to make. And, you know, Blatt made all the right moves in the series for the most part. I mean, they won four out of the six games. The Bulls single-handedly beat them in one game. It was game one. Yeah, that was a strange that game also. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you know, buzzer beater here. and you know, The Cavaliers have finally won three out of the four games in the series. I'm so glad, too. I did not want this to go to seven. I don't want anything weird to happen on our road to the title. We're sitting here eight games away from it. Um, now the bo- this is now- the closest they've been since 2009. Since when? 2009, when they, when they lost to Orlando in the conference final. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, Hedo Turkel- I That was brought up the other day. Rashad Lewis. Rashad Lewis. Oh, man. Yeah, and and I'll tell you what we're we're sitting here looking at at two teams that are not all that impressive, and I want to get I keep saying it I want to get to the Wizards and Hawks, but but real quick, Jimmy Butler. Now that the the the, the bull season is done, we're hearing a lot of rumors out here. Um, so we want to go real quick, uh, take a quick phone call. We want to go to uh, L.A. Sports Guy. Um, L.A. Did you have a question for for the program? 
about Jimmy Butler? I think I think you told our call screener that uh, you think Jimmy Butler's coming to the Lakers next year. Zach, that's your cue to pretend you're L.A. sports guy. Okay, so what was the question? I didn't hear it. <clears throat> Here, let me hit reset. We didn't we didn't discuss this in advance. Um, we're gonna take a quick phone call. Uh, we want to talk to L.A. sports guy calling into the program. I believe you told our call screener that you're convinced Jimmy Butler is going to sign a max deal with the Lakers, and then you're gonna sign some other free agents next year. Can you tell us about what you're thinking uh, the Lakers plan should be? Are you talking to me now, or? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, well, here's the only problem with Jimmy Butler coming to the Lakers next year. He's worth a max contract. The Bulls would be so stupid not to give him one. So if he signs a max deal with the Lakers, I assume the Bulls would match any offer that Butler's given, which is the only problem with the Lakers acquiring Jimmy Butler. And and does that mean that the Bulls can offer an extra year because they have his rights? Is that correct? Well, I mean, on the max offer sheet for restricted, yeah, they can, but I think that was this offseason. I don't know exactly what the details are. But anyway, no matter who offers him anything, the Bulls have the ability to match any single offer. And I'd be absolutely shocked if they don't go and match Jimmy Butler's offer. But you you said this is the end of the, the Bulls as we know it. Uh, everybody's saying Coach Thibodeau is out. What do you see happening there? And how did how did it get? How did the relationship get that to that point? Because it's just a weird storyline. Uh, this whole series. Off, it all started a few years ago. I was playing the show with Ron Adams, the lead assistant, when the Bulls didn't bring back Ron a few years ago, and that's when the relationship started to sour. Um, you know, other guys left the front office, guys like Matt Moore, who took the assistant GM job in, uh, you know, in Orlando. So it just, you know, there were different, um, you know, but it, you know, it just, it just happened like it did. So, and then you know, Thibodeau, like it so, so Th- Thibodeau is basically on the outs. If, if you listen to ESPN, if you believe talk radio, he's as good as gone. Exactly. So now, where do you think he's going to land? I'm here in Orlando. I think he's going to wind up. I think Orlando's very likely, like I said, because of the connection with him and Matt. Um, you know, and other people from the Bulls front office that have you know migrated down to the Magic. I think that's a possibility. I think New Orleans is another possibility. I think those are the two. New Orleans. How much? How much of an impact do you think? Uh, you know, a, a player like Anthony Davis. Uh, apparently, he wasn't even told that the coach was fired. He found out like everybody else uh, did. I like my. I, I don't love my Orleans, but I liked him, and he shouldn't have been fired. Well, but don't you also find it weird? We can talk about Monty Williams in a second, but first off, I mean, with a with a player like Anthony Davis, who is not a guarantee to re-sign with your franchise, do you find it weird that they didn't include him on that, or is do GMs rarely include their their key players on those? You decisions? should include your key players. So that was probably a pretty big mistake on their part, huh? I would think so. Well, so Thibs, put your. Um, Put put your bet down. Place your bets. Place your bets. You, you think the magic is where he's going to land? Or New Orleans. It's going to be one of the two. Okay, fair enough. Um, then let's talk about Wizards and Hawks here. What have you seen in this series with the injuries and, and with Paul Pierce and with the Hawks and their last second win on that rebound? Um, what are we dealing with here in, in this 3-2 series as we head to Game 6 over in Washington? I mean... I think Atlanta took control in that last second shot last night, but it's not over. I mean, they have not been playing well. I think Washington will still take the series, although I think Atlanta will win it, but I wouldn't be surprised, though. Okay. What about the West? What are we looking at out over here? I mean, these are 3-2 series. Clippers and Warriors are I, up. Golden State will win it, and the, I have a feeling the Clippers will close it out tonight. They're up by seven right now in the middle of the third, beginning of the third. Oh, okay. Before I came in here for show prep, it was uh, – I think the, yeah, the Rockets, Rockets were winning. Yeah, Rockets had just tied it or something like that, 41 or something. Um, well, so so this Cavs team moving forward, obviously we said injuries, you know, we, we got to get a little bit of time to heal up. What else are we looking at? We're, we're starting to see the, the end of the rainbow here. We're eight wins away from a, a championship. Eight wins away. Um, out of whoever we – is there a particular matchup we might want to be pulling for um, between the Wizards and the Hawks, is there any team that matches up with us a little better? Do you think, regardless I, I of pushing it, to Game Seven, matters. probably won't matter. It'll probably be a sweep either way. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be a sweep. I mean, but I think they will beat them single-handedly. Okay, maybe four-one or something. Um, yeah, because that's what I was wondering. Should I be pulling for the Wizards or do I? I don't know, like their particular matchups. If I if I want to delve as far as to uh, 
you know, picking advantage in there. So, anyway, haven't figured that out yet, but luckily I don't have to worry about that yet because they still have another game to play and we're done. And it was a really hard-fought game. Matthew Delavadova, Tristan Thompson. Man, Tristan is really shining in, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, w- one more thing before, before I get you out the door, Zach, and I let you go here. Um, you know, t- t- talk about what the Cavs general manager did making the moves that, that he made. Um, I just, I'm watching him on Shumpert. I'm watching J.R. Smith. And I, I just said, when these trades were made, I had no idea it was going to be this important. If we didn't pull the trigger I told, on those, I told you we would how, never how be here. Are Shumpert, you know, you effectively showed up all your, you know, the Cavaliers early in the season had major problems on the wing defensively. I mean, just guarding the perimeter. They were the worst in the league. I've never seen worse perimeter defense in my life. <laughs> Oh, man. We were really bad that first month or two. We were really bad. I mean, they were terrible. Don't forget the team that was 19 and 20. I know. And we had, some people said we were lucky to be there. Um, kind of like the Indians this year, just starting off horrible. You know, and then when you acquired Miles, you had a short up in the interior problems. You had Tristan Thompson found his role. Uh, you know, and this team really, you know, Kevin Love, I think, found his role in the team. Delvin Delvin showed, showed that he could be a critical role player to this team. And I really think they came together. I think coaching, I think experience, I think just playing with these guys together. So, I'm loving it, man. I, I just, if you want to talk about Cleveland being a blue collar town, if you, if that's still a thing that people say, uh, just just a really hard working state. You, you put your head down. You get get the work done. You, you just do it. It's not the flash of Los Angeles. It's not the extreme nightlife of Miami. It's not the glitz and the glamour of New York. It's its own kind of thing. And I'll tell you what, I mean, in a city that really belongs to the Cleveland Browns, you know, get, get muddy, get down there in the trenches and just battle some people. That That's what Ohioans, real, especially Clevelanders, really gravitate toward. But this Cavaliers team, headed up by LeBron James, even when he does not play a good game, our number three player, Kevin Love, is out for the season and he's missed the past five games, uh, six games. And when uh, Kyrie Irving is limping and, he, and he's getting his knee worked on on the side, this is a gritty, gutsy, hard-nosed, hard-fighting, scrappy uh, it's it's just one of those teams that, regardless of what uh, level your kid is playing sports, you want him to play this way. You want her to play this way. Just never give up and keep fighting and hustle. And, and you know, it's not over till a second after the the, the whistle sounds. I just I, I'm so proud of this Cavaliers team. I um, I was asked right after the game, Zach. Well, why aren't you more excited? Why aren't you you know jumping around? I don't know. I guess I would say for me. I, I, I feel like this has refined my focus and I'm taking a breath. I'm trying to just like calm down and say we got eight wins, focus on the next four. Who is that going to be? How do we go? Um, I, I guess for the Cavs then and this coaching staff, let me ask you this as our final question. Mm-hmm. Moving forward with the roster that we have and the injuries, what do you think is most important for the Cavaliers to do as far as strategy to make sure that whoever we play in the next round, we're going to give them the best version of our team. you got to stay healthy, and you have to have your role players play their role, and if they can do what they've been doing, they're going to win. They have been. Uh, that, that's what's just impressed me so much, Zach. I've, I've, I'm just really proud of this team. Like, Don't get me wrong. I'm really excited for the, the, the Buckeye season to start and see who's going to win that quarterback battle. You know, I'm I'm excited uh, for the Cleveland Browns and their draft picks, and you know, th- another year of maturity. See if Johnny Manziel can actually become a player in this league. I- I'm excited for a lot of things, and Corey Kluber's 18 oh, strikeouts. All I'll tell you is this: with the Cavaliers, look what you got—a bunch of inexperienced guys. And Tristan, you know, never really met his potential up until the last month and a half, two months. Kyrie Irving was, you know, at this point, you know, okay, you know, yeah, he's a good player, but is he just a stat sheet stuffer? Del Vadova, okay, he's an under scrappy under three. All these guys are defining their roles now because you have leadership from guys like LeBron James. I think that's been the biggest thing. Look at J.R. Smith. Look at Amon Shumpert. These guys are all guided by LeBron, and they've taken it to the next level. Yeah. I, so I guess, you know, the the, <laughs> the general manager duties for the Cleveland Cavaliers, I mean, is it LeBron or is it uh, – 
you know, coming from the, the, the head office, you know, who is the coach when he changes plays and, and says, just give me the damn ball. I want to, I want to get this shot. Uh, you know, there, there is a certain leadership. LeBron said, uh, when, when they're trying to get him to, to throw Blatt even further under the bus, he said, Hey, we all make mistakes. We got to pick each other up. Coaches are no different. You know, like it, LeBron really has brought home the skill set mentally, the game plan, the toughness, the tenacity, the the preparation and the hustle. I just, I just don't. I, I think if you're not the right type of player, LeBron has already run you out of town. See you, Dion Waiters, and um, I, I just think we're dangerous. I would say this, Zach. I'll wrap this up here. I would say that after Kevin Love got injured, <clears throat> my, my expectations for this team really plummeted. Uh, I had to reevaluate, and I'll tell you what: after beating the Chicago Bulls. I definitely feel, and I, I am on the record right now, this team can absolutely win a championship as it currently stands with the current health that we have. I think we are just as dangerous as, as any other team in this league with LeBron James on the on the court. Do you think we have that much of a chance, or you think I'm, I'm overstating it? I do. It I'm going to take a series by series. I'm going to say right now, I think they're the favorites going the next series. I thought they were the favorites going the tonight, too. Yeah. I, I gotta I gotta say it I I picked it in five I was off by one game fine so sue me but I just I never saw it going seven call me crazy but I I, I just see that this team's capable of a ton and I'm I'm just really excited to make sure that we're documenting this and uh, you know I hope it's gonna be one of those seasons to remember the very first Cleveland championship since I've been alive that's kind of a big deal across three sports but I'm excited for it I'm happy for it. And, uh, Zach, as always, I appreciate your time. Everybody, if you're not following Zach, do so on Twitter. He's at ZBarris. That's Z-B-A-R-I-S. Zach, I guess uh, once we have our opponent, maybe after game one, we'll have another chat and we'll see how things are looking then. Sound like a plan? Sounds good, man. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your time, and we will be talking again soon. There he goes, everybody. That is Zach Barris. We always appreciate Zach coming on during the NBA season so that we can talk Cavs and all things basketball. And we appreciate each and every one of you who have participated in our four-year beta test as we just had our birthday on May Day. That's our roundabout birth date here at the TNAM Radio Network and thenewamericanmedia.com. My name is Brian Engelman. I appreciate you all listening. And here's what I want you to do. Subscribe to youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia. That's youtube.com slash the New American Media. Go on Twitter. We're at American underscore media underscore. That's American underscore media underscore. Make sure that you're following us. Go on Facebook. Do a search for The New American Media with spaces in between and like the page. And then check out our homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. It is a, got to say, it is a great time to be a Cleveland Cavalier fan. I am convinced this team can win a title this year. Damn, are they scrappy. We've lost some great talent, but we still have some great talent. I am more convinced than ever that this Cleveland Cavaliers team can definitely win a title this year. No need to wait, and I'll tell you what, I'm tired of waiting. I'm just ready for, ready to hoist that trophy and fly home for a, for a party. So, hey, for everybody out there, I'm Brian Engelman signing out. I appreciate you. I love you, and peace. And this is John B. Wells reminding you that not only is Brian Engelman a cool guy and not only is the new American Media dot com a very cool platform, but here's a cool idea for you too. Are you alone? Not really. Do you like dogs? Do you like cats? You do, of course you do. Everybody does. One or the other, maybe even both. You know, there are a lot of dogs and cats that are at shelters right now, and if somebody doesn't take them home, they're gonna wind up euthanized. That's a nice way of saying they're going to be killed, because there's simply not enough room. I guarantee it, the best dogs and the best cats, the best pets, come from shelters. There's something about dogs and cats they know. They know where they are. You walk through one of them, and certainly at least one is going to look at you and go, I wish you'd take me home. I'm in hell. Please take me out of here. It'll be the best thing that you ever did for your soul. You'll feel good about it. And not only that, but you have a friend for life. doesn't matter if you've got money, you don't have money. What well, doesn't make any difference to a dog or a cat? All they need is the sound of your voice 
and maybe even the stroke of your hand, and they're fine. Maybe a little food every once in a while. The sweetest sound that those pets ever hear is your voice. Think it over and adopt a cat or a dog from a local shelter today. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did.